Hello everyone. Uh, in this episode we're going to solve some uh, examples for Nash equilibrium and uh, the idea is to understand uh, the models, uh, different models of duopoly. Uh, we're going to consider two uh, models of duopoly. The first one is Cournot and the second one is Bertrand. Okay, so let's talk about the Cournot uh, duopoly. Uh, well, uh, according to Cournot, um, there are two firms, so this is a strategic environment. So these two firms, firm one and firm two, if you like, uh, produces exactly the same good, all right? And for simplicity, and each firm selects how much quantity to produce. Well, they can produce, so let's say uh, firm I, where I is either one or two, refers to firm one or firm two. So QI is in between zero infinite. So uh, they can produce, uh, firms can produce any quantity they like. Obviously they can't produce infinite and obviously they can't produce something negative. All right, so there are again, infinitely many set of, uh, infinitely many strategies for each uh, firm. Well, then uh, the question is, what about the price, right? In real life, usually firms not only choose their quantities, but also their prices. Well, we assume that in this specific market environment, firms only choose how much to produce, all right? And then uh, uh, the, the, the market price will be determined by the market clearing condition or by the demand curve. So the demand, uh, actually we call it inverse demand, is basically giving by P equals um, A minus B times Q, where P is the market price and, and, and Q is the total output. So to be more specific, Q is equal to quantity of firm one and quantity of firm two, because there are only two firms uh, operating in this market, the total quantity is equal to, so the total supply is equal to the supply of firm one and supply of firm two, right? And obviously A and B are some positive uh, real numbers. Okay, well here, uh, this uh, sort of example makes sense in environments where uh, firms, for example, uh, I'm sorry, producing the product requires substantial amount of uh, time and planning in advance. For example, if it is an automobile, all right, if it is a car, for example, that they're producing, while well, the firms need to uh, sort of decide how much car to produce probably, a, a, you know, you know, five or six months in advance or maybe a year in advance. And then after they produce their quantities, uh, the market conditions, whether, you know, the market is in a boom or in, in sort of, uh, maybe there's a, a crisis that they, well, didn't know before producing the, these quantities. So the market price will be determined according to the market clearing condition afterwards. All right, so therefore, uh, the firms take the price as given uh, as a function of the quantities they selected, all right? But once again, this is a, a simultaneous move game where two firms produce, uh, choose their quantities, Q1 and Q2, simultaneously without observing the other firm's choice. And then uh, that's the end of the game. The, the, the price will be realized after their uh, quantity choices and obviously each firm, by assumption, is aiming to maximize its own profit. All right, well, in order to talk about the profit, we need to talk about the cost, right? Because the price and the quantity will give us the revenue, but what about the cost? Well, for simplicity, let's assume there is no fixed cost, but there is a marginal cost of, marginal cost of uh, CI, uh, which is greater than zero for each firm, all right? For I equals one and two. So firm one has cost C1, firm two has cost C2. These are marginal costs and there's no fixed cost. What does that mean? That means the profit of firm I is equal to revenue minus cost. So what is revenue? Revenue is equal to price times quantity of firm I, right? I mean, as a firm I, you do not care about the uh, other firm's quantity. Um, 
so price times quantity, so this is revenue, minus cost. Cost is marginal cost times the quantity you produce. All right, so what is the price? Price is given by this uh, inverse demand function. So it's basically A minus B times uh, uh, Q1 plus Q2 times QI minus CI QI. All right, so this is the profit function of firm I. What does that mean? Just to be more specific, profit function of firm one is equal to A minus, uh, I'm going to take CI also in the parentheses of QI. So it's A minus B Q1. Well, let's write, is, write it as open as possible. A minus BQ1 minus BQ2 minus C1 uh, multiplied everything by Q1. And profit of firm two is equal to A minus BQ1 minus BQ2 minus cost of the marginal cost times Q2, all right? Once again, this is a symmetric uh, uh, game because whenever you see Q1, write Q2, whenever you see Q2, write Q1, and whenever you see C1, write C2, you're gonna get the profit of the second firm by using the profit function of the first firm. So it's a symmetric game. All right, uh, so the question is, what is or are the Nash equilibrium of this game? Well, uh, solution is simple. What we do, we find the best response uh, function for each firm. All right, how do we find this? Well, to find, the best response function, we basically maximize the payoff function, right? Which is the profit in this case. So therefore that means we take the derivative of the profit function with respect to Q1 and set it equal to zero and solve it. And this is the first order condition for firm one. And symmetrically, we take the partial derivative of firm two's profit uh, with respect to Q2 and set it equal to zero and solve it. So as a solution of this, we're gonna get the best response function for our firm one. And as a result of this maximization or the first order condition, we're gonna get the best response function of firm two. So what does that imply? Well, or if and only if, when you take the partial derivative of this uh, profit function with respect to Q1, you're gonna get A here minus 2BQ1, because this is going to be BQ1 square, so it's going to be 2BQ1 minus BQ2 minus C1, which is equal to zero. And if you uh, uh, take the partial derivative of the uh, second profit function, it's going to be A minus BQ1 minus 2BQ2. Be careful, it's going to be Q2 square, not Q1 square, uh, minus C2 equals zero. So if you solve this, that means, you know, I would like to write Q1 as a function of Q2 because Q1 is the choice variable for uh, firm one. So that means send this Q1 term to the other side, leave everything on the uh, left hand side. So what I have is therefore, and divide both sides by 2B. So leave Q1 alone. So if you do this, you're gonna find that Q1 equals uh, a minus BQ2 minus C1 divided by 2B. And once again, if you do this, uh, you're gonna find Q2, equal, I'm sorry, if you solve this for Q2, you're gonna get Q2 equals A minus BQ1 minus C2 divided by 2B, all right? Okay, very well. Well, what does that mean? That means we actually found the best response for these firms. Let's write the best response function for firm one. Remember, it's a function of uh, the other firm's strategy, which is Q2. Uh, or you can write it Q1, which is a function of Q2, which is equal to this guy. A minus BQ2 minus C2, oh, C1, I'm sorry. C1 divided by 2B. And the best response function for firm one, firm two, I'm sorry, which must be a function of Q1, or, you know, sometimes we write it as Q2, which is a function of Q1. It's equal to A minus 
uh, BQ1 minus C2 divided by 2B. Okay, well, if you draw the best response functions, what you will get is actually uh, the point of intersection. Uh, so here is, let's, let's do this. I mean, you don't have to draw the best response functions every time, uh, but it makes sense to do it at least once. So let's call this Q1 and let's call this Q2. So the quantity choice for firm one could be zero, could be infinite and same for Q2. So I would like to draw this one first. So it's a straight line, be careful. Here, A is a constant number, B is a constant number, C1 is a constant number. So the only uh, variable is Q2, all right? So, and so when Q2 is equal to zero, right? When Q2 is equal to zero, so this guy is gonna be A, so the Q1 is going to, basically I'm finding the Q1 intercept, is gonna be A minus C1 divided by 2B. All right, so let's call this as A minus C1 divided by 2B. Well, I did not mention it, but obviously I assume that this A parameter is greater than C1. So the marginal cost is not terribly huge because otherwise uh, probably the, the only outcome, the rational outcome in this game is gonna be producing nothing because the C1, the marginal cost is way too high. Okay, uh, well, what about the Y-intercept, the Q2 intercept? Well, this time I set Q1 equals zero, all right? And then solve Q2. So if Q2, if Q1 is zero, 2B times zero is zero. So I send B, Q2 this side. So divide both sides by B. So what I'm gonna get is this, A minus C1 divided by uh, B, all right? Okay, so um, by the way, if you see, this is A minus C1 divided by B. This is A minus C1 divided by 2B. So I'm dividing it by a, a bigger number. So therefore, that means if, if, if this is that big, well, this should be sort of half of it, right? So let's be more accurate. So A minus C1 divided by 2B, okay? Very good. So that means my best response function, uh, is a straight line that connects those dots. I'm not gonna look at the, you know, how it behaves in this area or in this region because, you know, Q1 and Q2 cannot be negative, all right? So this is the best response function of player, uh, firm one. Well, if you do the same thing for firm two, what you're gonna get is, once again, when uh, Q1 is zero, the Q2 is gonna be A minus C2 divided by 2B. Well, I don't know exactly where it is gonna be, but depending obviously on A, C1 and C2. Uh, so for example, if C1 and C2 are equal, so probably A minus C2 divided by B is gonna be somewhere here. And then the Q1 intercept is gonna be uh, A minus C1 or C2 divi uh, divided by B, all right? So therefore, Oops, well, this is supposed to be a straight line, I'm sorry. So the, the best response function for firm two is going to be this guy. All right, and so this point is the point of intersection is in Nash equilibrium. Why is that so? Well, because this is Q1 star, Q2 star. Well, at Q1, Q1 star, Q2 star, what we have is that one, Q1 star is a best response for firm one to Q2 star, right? When firm one is producing, I'm sorry, when firm two is producing Q2 star amount, what is the best response for firm one? So I'm gonna look at this uh, best response function. Well, it's exactly Q1 star. So Q1 star is not element, it's exactly equal to, well, because there's only one best response, but Q1 star is the best response to Q2 star. What else? However, if firm one is producing Q1 star, what is the best response for firm two? I'm gonna look at firm two's best response function and Q1 stars, uh, the best response to Q1 star is gonna be Q2 star. So Q2 star is element of best response for firm one, Q1 star. You see what I mean? So that means at this strategy profile, 
each firm, each player is best responding his or her opponent. So it's regret free because everybody is doing the best uh, he or I mean they can do. That's the definition of Nash equilibrium, right? So therefore, this point of intersection uh, where the two best responses uh, uh, sort of intersect is the Nash equilibrium. By the way, we always use this idea whenever we have two or more players, uh, the, 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 mm, when the point of intersection of the best response functions is always going to give us the Nash equilibrium. So how do we find the point of intersection? Well, simple. Um, this is two graphs. Agree? Uh, so what we can do is just, uh, the, the, this is Q1 equals to uh, this guy. Let's write it A minus C1 divided by 2B minus b divided by 2b times q2 which is basically q2 divided by 2 right and i can write this i'm just simplifying them um, q2 is equal to a minus c2 divided by 2b minus uh, bq1 divided by 2b meaning uh, q1 divided by 2. so if i want to uh, find this point of intersection that means i have to solve these two equalities simultaneously which means whenever you see q2 just plug it here all right and then uh, reduce the number of parameters to one and then solve it so what does that mean that means q1 equals this a minus c1 divided by 2 b minus 1 over 2 parentheses q2 and uh, instead of q2 i'm going to write this a minus c2 divided by 2 b minus q1 over 2 all right so if you do simplification on the right hand side i'm going to have a minus c1 over 2b minus a minus c2 over 4b uh, plus q1 over 4 which is equal to q1 so i'm going to pull this q1 to the left hand side what i'm going to have uh, 3q1 divided by 4 so let me clean this part um, so on the left hand side, I have 3q1 divided by 4. On the right hand side, what do I have? Well, I'm going to simplify this, but I have 4b here. So multiply uh, this ratio by 2 so that I have 4b and 4b. So I can uh, subtract the uh, so, you know, a minus c1 with a minus c2. But don't forget, it's going to be 2a minus 2c1 minus a minus minus so it's going to be plus c2 be careful divided by 4b okay and so what do i have i have uh, here a minus 2c1 plus c2 divided by 4b equals 3q1 divided by 4 so this 4 and this 4 will cancel out send this 3 to the other side so that means q1 is equal to a minus 2c1 plus c2 divided by 3b all right, so I can call this Q1 star because this is the Nash equilibrium strategy for firm one. Well, how do I find Q2? Well, simple, whenever you see Q1 here, just plug this guy, star, and so it's gonna give you the Q2 star, the Nash equilibrium strategy for firm two. And well, I know because the game is symmetric, the solution should be symmetric too. A minus two C2 plus c1 divided by 3b is going to be the Nash equilibrium. So that point of intersection refers to this q1 star and q2 star. And this is exactly how we find the optimal solution. I'm sorry, the Nash equilibrium solution uh, strategies for the Cournot oligopoly. Okay, any question?